Hey there, wastrels! Cardiogenetics here, with another Kato's Countdowns for Fallout New Vegas. And I have a question, why should weapons get all the attention? Isn't it important in the wasteland to be protected as well? So, this countdown is going to deal with the most protective armor that you can get in the game. I despise adding extra criteria to countdowns like this, but I kind of have to with the armor. So bear with me. First criteria is damage threshold. This is the main one. The higher DT, the higher it is on the list. Second criteria is helmets. If a helmet is part of the set, it gets added to the total DT, giving sets with helmets a distinct advantage in this list. And finally, variants. Some armor sets have multiple variants, this will only include the best of those. So, five entries in this list will not be taken over by variants of NCR Ranger Veteran armor, even though it's really cool. With the criteria out of the way, you can expect me to show you the locations of these armor pieces, not just their stats. So, in case you want to get them yourself, you'll have the means to do that. No more waiting! This is the most protective, bullet-blocking, rugged, and resistant armor you can find in Fallout New Vegas. Whether you're a Legion courier or not, with the armor of the 87th tribe, your allegiance doesn't matter when wearing it. This is a piece of heavy armor that comes with a damage threshold of 22. The bonuses you gain from wearing the armor of the 87th tribe is an AP boost of 10, a critical chance plus 3, and a charisma plus 1. For heavy armor like this, it's nice to see no downsides outside of the slower movement. Even though this is worn by someone formerly in the Legion, nuked into marked mandom, it does not count as faction armor. Besides its statistical boosts with no downsides, the armor of the 87th tribe also boasts the highest item health. That means it's also above power armor in durability. So, now that we've covered the stats, let's go over where to get the armor of the 87th tribe. Firstly, this is gained through the Lonesome Road expansion for Fallout New Vegas. And at the very end of Lonesome Road, you have the choice of nuking either Dry Wells or the Long 15, neither or both. But nuking Dry Wells is what you need to get this armor. After you do, a boat in Cottonwood Cove opens up to travel to Dry Wells, a highly irradiated area with newly made marked men. Their leader here is Gaius Magnus. Defeat this hearty legion leader and you'll be able to pick up the armor of the 87th tribe off of his corpse. Sticking to the legion-like theme, we now move on to the Legion Centurion armor. This is a medium Legion faction armor set. The body provides 18 damage threshold, while the helmet provides 5 for a total of 23 damage threshold. This works out really well showing the criteria of the actual countdown, because while the last entry came with the Centurion helmet, it actually matches the Centurion armor in this one. This mishmash of padding, plating, and cloth doesn't have any extra bonuses to speak of. So what you see is what you get with the damage threshold. But it is medium armor rather than heavy, so you do get a little bit more mobility out of it. Again, this is faction armor armor though, so if you're not playing a Legion character, you're not going to benefit as much from this armor set. Because if you're traveling around most areas in the Mojave, a lot of people are going to try to shoot you on sight, which is an upside or downside depending on what your courier chooses to do. But enough of that, let's go over some places we can acquire the Legion Centurion armor. One of the more time-consuming ways to get the Legion Centurion armor is just befriending them. Do quests for the Legion where you can find them, and turn in NCR dog tags in Cottonwood Cove, and you'll gain access to the Caesar's Legion safe house. Once your reputation is liked, and by speaking to Lucius at the fort, you'll not only gain access to a set of Centurion armor, but also the Lucky Shades. If you're more of an infiltrator type and decide to kill off the Legion and hide your identity, Aurelius of Phoenix in Cottonwood Cove is wearing a set of Centurion armor. Wipe out Cottonwood Cove, you can just loot his body to take it. For you light armor users, this is the only light armor on this countdown. Sorry to say, light armor doesn't have that much damage threshold, but there is one set that stands above the rest, and that is the Sierra Madre armor reinforced. The armor itself has a damage threshold of 18, whereas the helmet has a damage threshold of 5 for a total of 23. The same damage threshold, mind you, as the Centurion armor, just to put things in perspective. But also like the Centurion armor, there's no extra bonuses that come along with wearing the armor, it's all protection. This is what I would advise you looking for, Wastrels, if you're using a lot of the light armor perks in New Vegas, like Travel Light and Light Touch. Now for the downside, if you consider it a downside, where to get? the Sierra Madre armor reinforced. The name already implies it, but you need the Dead Money DLC and to take part in Elijah's heist in order to get the Sierra Madre armor reinforced to use it in the rest of the game. Once you gather your team in the villa and take care of what you need to with the Gala event, you will gain entry into the Sierra Madre. And basically the first objective takes you to the casino floor of the Sierra Madre. From here, be mindful of the security of course, but take the stairs up to the VIP lounge. 
Behind the bar is a speaker you're gonna wanna take out and a door. Go through this door and take your first right and straight ahead in the next room will be a cabinet. Inside this cabinet is the reinforced Sierra Madre armor, at least the body armor of it. Off to the right is another hallway and the door to the supply room. The nearby terminal should open the door to it. Get into the supply room and on the desk should be the reinforced helmet to go along with your Sierra Madre armor, even if you're not a light armor user. This reinforced armor will help you survive what the Sierra Madre has to dish out. Now we're gonna backtrack a little bit to Lonesome Road again for the Scorched Sierra Power Armor. An interesting set of heavy armor indeed. While it doesn't come with a helmet, its total damage threshold just from the body armor is 24, and it has some pretty cool additional unique effects. It boosts strength by one, fire resistance by 25, and regenerates HP at a rate of two hit points Per second. The Scorched Sierra Power Armor also does not count as faction armor, so it can be worn provided you have power armor training wherever you want without paying a target on your back that you don't want there. In fact, I think the only downside really is that it is power armor and there's only a couple of ways to get the power armor training. Now, the official how to get the Scorched Sierra Power Armor. As I was stating with the armor of the 87th tribe, you need to get to the end of the story of the Lonesome Road DLC, where you're presented with the Who Do I Nuke choice. If you pick nuke both before you reach the strip in the main game, the faction reputations will go back to neutral anyway. So obviously, nuking the Long 15, which is the NCR side, will open up a new path from the Mojave outpost. You'll discover a lot of marked men wearing NCR colors and a ton of radiation, as well as Colonel Royes. This is who you're looking for, and this is who is wearing the Scorched Sierra power armor. Take him out, the power armor's yours. Now we're switching sides for the faction armor. We now land on the NCR salvaged power armor, which includes a salvaged power helmet too. The damage threshold of the body armor is 20 and the helmet is four for a total of 24 damage threshold. The upsides and downsides kind of balance out for the NCR salvaged power armor. You don't need power armor training and it gives you quite a bit of damage threshold, but it's NCR faction armor and also kind of comes with the power armor penalty of minus two agility, without any benefits to balance that side out. And as expected, this is about as heavy as a set of power armor too, without the extra servos. So ultimately this is a good choice if your options are extremely limited. After hitting about level 16, you'll see heavy troopers show up in various NCR military outposts, like the 188 Trading Post, Camp Forlorn Hope, Camp McCarran and Hoover Dam. But if you don't feel like killing anybody for it, just get enough reputation with the NCR and reach the status of liked, and Colonel Shu at Camp McCarran will give you a key to the NCR Ranger safe house. The safe house includes a set of the NCR salvage power armor as well as many other NCR related goodies. An example of the numerous variance criteria I mentioned at the very beginning of this countdown is combat armor. There's so many versions, but the best of the best of combat armor when it comes to damage threshold is the combat armor reinforced Mark II. The full damage threshold bonus for the combat armor reinforced Mark II is 25. 20 from the body, five from the helmet. Medium armor can be considered a benefit with extra mobility, but this is still all about protection, so no additional bonuses are included. Oh wait, it's not faction armor. I guess you could include that as a bonus. <laughs> because as this countdown has been going, this provides more protection than the salvaged power armor without the downside to agility. You can get the Combat Armor Reinforced Mark II in several locations, mostly from vendors, but we'll go with the easiest. The Gun Runner's Vendatron could be your first stop, the Hidden Valley Bunker from Knight Torres, or Blake at the Crimson Caravan. If this is what you're going for, you are likely going to be paying caps for it as well, so expect to spend around 9,500 caps for the whole set. Pricey, but it keeps your vitals from getting extra holes. We're getting iconic now with the T45D Power Armor. The damage threshold of the body is 22, the damage threshold of the helmet is five, for a total of 27 damage threshold when you're wearing a full set of T45. You will mostly see this in the Brotherhood variant, but there is also the less common non-faction variant, which we'll go into how to get both shortly. For bonuses, you gain a plus two strength from the T45D, a minus two agility, and plus 10% to radiation resistance. 
the T45D Power Helmet also gives a plus three to radiation resistance. Thankfully, this is a situation where the pros kind of outweigh the cons. Speaking of weight, the plus two strength bonus that you get from the power armor translates to an additional 50 carry capacity if you were eight strength or lower. But that just cancels out the weight of the entirety of the power armor, helmet and body totaling 50 pounds of weight. So like the Scorch Sierra power armor I had mentioned before, you will need power armor training to wear power armor. But now we'll move on to where to get the Brotherhood version and the standard version of the T45D power armor and helmet. Because of the Brotherhood being the main faction and source of power armor in the Mojave Wastes, befriending them and going through Knight Torres to get a suit, or waiting until you're friendly enough to get access to their safe house are both routes you can take. Also, if you're befriending the Brotherhood already, Elder McNamara or Harden, after completing Eyesight to the Blind or Tend to Your Business, will end up rewarding you with the non-faction variant of the T45 power armor. Out Outside of the Brotherhood, supposedly Quartermaster Barden at Hoover Dam and the Khans at the Great Khan Armory can carry suits of T-45 sometimes as well. Now for the best variant of our poster boy Ranger Veteran type armor, we have the Elite Riot Gear. This is a set of medium armor with a total damage threshold of 28, and this comes with a ton of bonuses on the body as well as the helmet. The body armor of the Elite Riot Gear gives a critical chance boost of 5%, adds to your gun skill by 10, and boosts charisma by 1. The Elite Riot Gear helmet grants a bonus to speech by 5, and a bonus to perception by 2, and adds the rare effect called Sneak Sight, which lets you activate a night vision effect whenever you go into sneak mode wearing the helmet. The Elite Riot Gear is also counted in having the highest item HP or durability for medium armor, so you'll get a lot of mileage out of it too without having to repair as frequently. Overall, this is just extremely good when it comes to medium armor and the bonuses it provides, which you can fully utilize if you're running a guns character who happens to want to use a little extra charm in their speech. Now, if you're looking to get your Elite Riot gear, this is another you'll need to travel through the Lonesome Road DLC to obtain. Once you get to the second half of the divide, look for the Third Street Municipal Building. There will be a pipe here that you can use to travel to the upper floor. Floor. And when you get up here, there will be a long dead riot control officer. So that's where you get the elite riot gear, as well as some sniper rifle parts and ammo if you need them. The iconic armor keeps flowing with the T-51B power armor, which gives a total damage threshold of 31, 25 from the suit, and 6 from the helmet. Unlike the T-45 model, there is no agility penalty, and instead you get a strength bonus of 1 and radiation resistance plus 25. The helmet also comes with a charisma boost of 1 and some extra radiation resistance of 8. Like the T-45 entry, there are faction specific variants and non-faction ones of the T-51B, so you can wander different places in the Mojave without repping the Brotherhood the whole time. Knight Torres is an obvious choice at the Hidden Valley Bunker in getting yourself a suit of the T-51. Also, the recon teams that the Brotherhood sends you to will be at least wearing the body armor of the Brotherhood T-51. But another possible location for a full set of non-faction T-51B power armor is the Deathclaw Promontory. If you're looking to have an epic battle with Deathclaws in order to get your T-51B power armor, the Deathclaw Promontory is right across the river from the Cliffside Prospector Camp, northeast of Cottonwood Cove. Fight through all of the Death Claws, an Alpha and a Mother included, and there will be two Prospector corpses you'll find baking in the sun. One of them is wearing a non-faction version of the T-51B power armor. We will be coming back to this location in a second. But first, we gotta go over omissions. And I know people are probably going to mention this if I don't myself. The Ganon Family Tesla Armor. The total damage threshold you get out of this armor is 32. 26 from the body, 6 from the helmet. Its total bonuses include a plus 10 to energy weapons, a plus 20 to radiation resistance, a minus 1 to charisma from the helmet, and a plus 5 more radiation resistance from the helmet. This power armor is awesome, it looks cool, and it's the only power armor that counts as medium instead of the standard heavy. I won't linger too long though. In order to get the Ganon Family Tesla armor, you have to go through Arcade Ganon's companion quests up until right before the Battle of Hoover Dam. And for Ald Lang Syne, his ending companion quest will come up. At the end of the quest, if you convince Arcade to help the followers of the Apocalypse, he will give his armor to the Courier instead of wearing it himself. It's a great set of medium power armor, but a bit of a pain to get. Now, on to the final. 
I didn't want to ruin the surprise with the omission, but you probably knew what was coming after that. The Remnant's Power Armor, aka the armor of the West Coast Enclave that the Chosen One chose to completely ruin. The body's damage threshold for the Remnant's Power Armor is 28, and the helmet's DT is 8 for a total of 36 damage threshold. Unlike the Ganon Family Tesla armor, this is a set of heavy armor with the weight to back it up. And grants some lesser bonuses, but bonuses nonetheless. A strength plus one, a radiation resistance total of 20 from both pieces, and a negative one penalty to charisma. It makes sense, the Enclave Remnants inspire fear rather than hope. But yeah, that is the Remnant's Power Armor. And the cool part is, you don't need to do Arcade Ganon's quest to get a set of the Remnant's Power Armor. And since the Enclave is pretty much extinct, there's no faction flag that goes along with it. So now for the location of the Remnant's Power Armor. In the T-51 entry, I showed you where to get a non-faction version from the Deathclaw Promontory. Well, in that same location, the other Prospector's body is equipped with the Remnant's Power Armor, but the helmet is nowhere to be found. Without meeting up with the Remnant's, the only helmet you're going to find just laying around is gonna be on the opposite side of the desert, on the way to Jacobstown. Of the few mines you can venture into, you're looking for the Silver Peak Mine. Since you already had to fight Deathclaws for the first piece, you can probably assume that it's not going to be a cakewalk here either. The Silver Peak Mine is infested with Cazadors, but if you make your way all the way to the end, going to the upper level of the large cavern, behind the gate up there will be a skeleton alongside the Remnant's Power Armor Helmet. So there you go. Is there anything that you feel like I should have mentioned, be it locations or even omissions? Because this list was pretty much strictly damage threshold and protection value. Well, I myself like to wear Joshua Graham's getup because it looks cool and it has a critical boost. Leave a comment below. If you feel like joining the names of the awesome supporters on screen, including Wasteland Legend Sven, you can do so by supporting me on Patreon for as little as a buck. And lastly, if you found this entertaining, useful, or both, do whatever you see fit to show that. I'm Kato Genesis. Thank you so very much for watching. And may you wander the wasteland like you own it.